Bird Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, think outside. Can-Am, time for some off-road living. And by Yamaha, revs your heart. Yamaha's YXE set the sports side-by-side -side industry on its ear when it was first released in 2015, because it not only did something that was completely new in the industry, but it was something that people had been begging for. The YXE was the first pure sport side-by-side -side with a fully manual transmission with a clutch. And it was truly awesome, quickly amassing a huge following of dedicated YXE buyers who would, from then on, never consider buying anything else. Today, Yamaha is releasing an updated version of the YXE with some never before seen features aimed directly at making it more accessible to a wider range of drivers. Before we get to that though, let's take a look at where the YXE started and how it got to where it is today. The goal of the YXE from the very start was to have this direct connection between the driver and the vehicle that had never been experienced before in a side-by-side. -side. You know, we called it the first pure sport side-by-side. -side. And what that meant really was manual transmission. That's how we got that direct connection from the driver to the vehicle that really wasn't available in any other vehicle in the side-by-side -side world at that time. So the very first year, 2016, we had the full manual clutch, uh, foot clutch pedal, and you shifted sequentially up, uh, up with your right hand. And then in 2017, for that model year, we came out with the first sport shift model, which again, kept a uh, computer controlled clutch and you still shifted it. You still had that connection to the vehicle with your hands, but it expanded to even more people who maybe weren't quite as adept to use a foot clutch and the computer controlled the clutch just by every time you actuated a paddle. So after the sport shift was introduced in 2017, we made some big changes for the 2019 model year. Number one of the gear ratio, first gear was made 24% lower than the original one, and second through fifth were made 7% lower. But we went from a 27 inch tire, a Bighorn 2.0, to a 29 inch Bighorn original that actually had its sidewall tuned just for us to go from a six ply to an eight ply rating. A Couple of key benefits to that gear ratio and that tire change. It was a bigger, heavier tire, which really enhanced the versatility and the flexibility of that transmission. And it also enabled them to drive at higher speeds with bigger tires in you know, steep, sandy terrain as well. Uh, another key change that was made for that model year was moving the radiator from the front to the back. Drastically increased the cooling capacity, uh, made the cab a lot cooler as well by not pulling the hot air from the radiator through the cab like the original models did. So that was a big change. And then of course it became more capable in a wider variety of conditions. We also added some new sport shift logic at that time. We improved its ability to shift more smoothly and shift more quickly. For 2024, Yamaha has made one of the most significant updates to the YXE since its release, aimed directly at making it more accessible to a wider range of riders. 2024, biggest thing is six speed with automatic function. So we wanted to keep what was great about the YXE, which was that direct connection. So the core YXE person, they really want that connection to the vehicle. And that's why we kept the sport shift function as one of the three modes of the automatic. Then we added sport auto, and then we also added regular auto. So regular auto, what it allows you to do is really have a casual mindset when you're driving. It short shifts, keeps a taller gear, it downshifts very late, keeps the RPM very low, and really allows you to communicate with your passenger, just have a more relaxed mindset while you're driving and you don't have to shift. Uh, Sport Auto is really the core of what YXE is all about. Shifts very late, very high RPM. We've got a 10,500 RPM rev limit and the Sport Auto really highlights that, really helps people understand uh, kind of the, the way to get the most out of the YXE. And this new six speed transmission, the gears are spaced very evenly. It's really easy uh, to keep the vehicle in the sweet spot of its power band and the six speeds help us do that. And of course, sport shift function, just like it always has, it'll never upshift for you in that situation, only downshift, but it'll only downshift for convenience and to protect the clutch. I think the YC is gonna be around for a while, of course. Uh, I think this is really gonna expand its uh, appeal to a wider range of people. Um, if you were someone that was like, I get to shift, that's why I wanna buy a YZ because it was the only vehicle that you could do that with. But if you were someone who said, well, I don't wanna have to shift, then, now with those automatic modes, you don't have to shift. And then you get uh, both ends of the spectrum, which I think is really important for the future success of YXZ. 
And of course, with those six-speed gear ratios, you can do a lot more with it in a lot different terrains. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride on our strength. I'm at the new 2024 YXC 1000R SS new model intro. Yamaha has been slowly evolving and changing the YXC over a number of years. There's been a lot of updates and improvements. This is probably the biggest one yet. Unique parts of the YXC, it's got a three cylinder 999cc engine and it's mated to a manual gearbox. And Yamaha was the first one to do a manual gearbox in a sport side by side. And when they released the first YXC, we all went nuts because it was awesome and it really was. So what's different about this one? Well, basically now you have a six speed transmission with gear ratios that are much more usable. They're closer together, more evenly spaced. Uh, and obviously an extra gear, six speed, and it just it just changes the whole driving experience. No more are you in your you know first gear that's super super low, almost unusable, and then second gear is a big jump. Now the gears are all spaced out really evenly, and that's great. But what's also different about this one is an all new auto mode, and not just one auto mode. There's two. There's auto and sport auto, and they're controlled by a little knob on the dashboard. And what it means is you basically just push the throttle, and the vehicle shifts for you. So that's really the big news for this vehicle and really does add a whole new dynamic to how you drive. Now, what's really important though is that you still have sport shift mode with the paddle shifters that still exists. So you don't lose that manual control and that fun of pulling the paddle and hearing it clank shifts. You still get that, so that's great. Now, of course, the standout design feature of a YXZ is the nose and this low sort of scooped hood area. This has been invaluable out here uh, in, in this area of Utah with the rocks. There's a reason these shocks stick through the hood, and it's not just to be able to adjust your compression, high and low speed compression from up here so it's easier to access. The reason that the hood is scooped like this is so that when you sit in the driver's seat or the passenger seat, you can actually see out over the hood and down to the ground. You can see your front wheel as it articulates. And anyone who's rock crawled before knows this is no small deal. This is a huge deal. And the more you use it, the more you really appreciate that about, about the YXZ. I like the back end of a YXC. I think it looks really trick with the single tail light, which actually did come uh, from another product in their lineup. I think that's cool they reused that. And then the single exit exhaust right in the middle. Of course, anyone who knows me knows that I don't think there's any better sound in the entire motorsports industry than a three cylinder. And this sounds so good. Best sounding side by side out there. Yamaha's done a fantastic job with this thing. We have really put it through its paces over the past day and, and put on a lot of miles and a lot of really harsh terrain. You can see around us, this terrain is not forgiving in any way. And none of our group, which is a big group, has had a single problem, not a single issue with the, with the vehicle, no tire flats, nothing. Yamaha's done a great job of making this thing not only fast and fun to drive, but also extremely durable. That's why a lot of you guys buy them because you can trust Yamaha quality. Everybody knows you buy a Yamaha, it's gonna outlast you. And uh, the YXC is no different. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. The all new 2024 Razor XP is a formidable side-by-side -side without any upgrades. The factory options of Sport, Premium and Ultimate give you some choices as to the level of build that you want from the dealership. But at the end of the day, the world of accessorization with your 2024 Polaris XP is wide open when it comes to pure Polaris accessories. And after waiting by the mailbox in anticipation, all of the products that I ordered have finally arrived for my Razor XP. Now, if you wanna see what's available for your Polaris product, make sure you go to their website. All you gotta do is plug in your model and your year, and it's gonna show you everything that fits as a direct bolt-on. Cool thing is, it also shows availability.
Now, I know that the Razer that I'm upgrading is an ultimate. So from the factory, it's pretty well equipped. But one thing that I also know to be true, there's always room for customization. And if it's here around dirt tracks, I'm gonna be the one who's doing it. And besides, I wanted to take this XP a little more towards the mud side of things. Not going too crazy. Nah, just stick around, you're gonna see. So starting with the exterior of the vehicle, let's take a look at a few different things. Number one, the poly roof. If you bought a sport model, you didn't get any roof at all. But if you bought the ultimate or the premium, you get this plastic roof. Not a bad product, works just fine, but I am a bigger fan of the aluminum options that Polaris offers for a couple of different reasons. And one of those reasons is more than just because it's a better looking roof. It's because when I go to mount my rigid SR series 32 inch LED light bar with the pulse bar harness, it makes my life easier. The aluminum is a nicer structure to mount to and the rigid mounts fit up perfectly. As mentioned, I'm using the pulse bar harness from Polaris for power so I don't need to route to the battery and all that. Just pull the stock plug and hook up the harness. Now that's smart engineering. While I'm up at the front, I know that having a windshield is handy in the mud, but not a full one, just a lock and ride half windshield and hard coat poly. It snaps on and off easily so I can use it when I want and clean it when it's dirty. And I still get great sight lines out of the front when it's installed. It's a bit more of a front mud redirector than anything, but I know in the spring and fall, it'll help keep the cab a bit warmer as well. Now out back, I'm not gonna do all of that much, but I do wanna drop in a 30 quart lock and ride cooler. It's enough that it'll give you storage for a day or nice cold drinks and food, but it also leaves the front portion of the rear box available to use, which is important. And sure, you could bring any cooler along, but with Lock and Ride, it's secure without any extra thought or tie down strap prep. It stays put and I've never been on a ride where anyone has ever said, hey, we've got too many cold drinks. You get what I mean. Now, if we're gonna be powering through the mud, there's a few longevity items that I like to add. This is for longevity of the bodywork because the truth is when you're powering through all that mud, you don't know what's down underneath and you don't wanna use your wallet as the repair tool at the dealership. Right up front, it's a must have, and that's a winch. I'm optioning for the Polaris Pro HD 4,500 pound winch. It's a synthetic rope, 50 foot, and yes, it has rapid recovery. So the winch actually has a faster gear to re-spool the line after you pull out your buddy. Comes with a wired and wireless remote that works up to 50 feet away, so you don't have to be in the mud running a rocker switch. It also has the auto stop feature, so you don't bind up your cable wondering if it's all back up in the spool. Up front, I also opted for a high coverage front bumper that protects the front rad and headlights in a way that's really stylish. Factory mount points are easy to get to, and this goes on quickly and integrates with the Pro HD winch as well. Off the sides, rock sliders or mud bumpers will pay for themselves the first time that you find a large wad of granite hidden beneath and they attach so easily that anyone can do it. Factory mount points are easy to identify, and once installed, these really do give me the confidence when bouncing through anything the trail throws at me. Like most of the Polaris bumpers, color options are available. I'm not sure if I like the black or the red. Oh well, what can you do? Can't change it now. Now, almost last, but certainly not least, is gonna be a wheel and tire package. But before I get to that, I wanna do something that has proved to be really important, not just in keeping me clean inside of a side-by-side, -side, but also keeping my marriage happy, uh, full coverage fender flares. Sure, we all know that we're gonna get muddy, but having the extra protection of these easy to install flares really does keep everyone inside the cab happy. You can still have all the fun that you want in the mud, but it's not all coming back into the cab and on your passenger. And with the upgraded Pro Armor Mud XC 30 by 10 inch square tire setup, we'll be sending the mud in all kinds of directions. Mounted up to a 5201 matte black 15 inch rim, these are really a great looking tire package. 10 ply construction with dual compound rubber in the lugs gives us great grip on mud or trail, but most importantly, a better wear life so that we can ride more and replace less. And because we didn't change the outside diameter of the tire, we don't need to worry about clutching. Just bolt them on and go get dirty. Upgrading with factory design parts like the ones that I've showed you today gives you peace of mind that those parts are going to fit every time because they're designed at the exact same time that this vehicle was put through the design process. That means more smiles, more miles, and less time in the shop. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the victory lap. And by Mad Ramps. Leave the trailer and go.
Earlier this season, I evaluated CF Moto's 50 inch wide Gen 2 Z Force 800 trail. I was impressed with this machine, but more so with the massive leaps forward CF Moto appears to have taken in its production quality. Now, as much fun and as practical as a 50 inch wide side by side is, the 60 inch wide sport category is what really makes my tummy tickle. And that's why I elbowed my way into the driver's seat to make sure I got to evaluate the overhauled Z Force 950 Sport. The 60 inch wide Pure Sport category is actually pretty competitive, with models from Can Am and Polaris typically hogging the spotlight. Here's the thing though, CF Moto's packed a ton of value into its sport offering, and the price difference is staggering. At literally thousands less than a Razor Trail S900 Sport, packed with more options and more horsepower, the Z Force 950 Sport is definitely worth a closer look. Similar to the Trail, the Sport comes standard with a roof featuring a drip edge, and these beautifully crafted doors that are finished on the inside open and close easily in a rubber seal to keep out trail muck. There's also mirrors, a 3,500 pound winch, and the cab features comfortable seats, tilt steering, and CF Moto's gorgeous and easy to read instrumentation. You already know I'm a fan of this display, and it should be motivating other manufacturers to step up their game. In this Gen 2 chassis, CF Moto's also paid particularly close attention to improving accessibility to service. Both seats remove quickly and easily to provide access to the battery, ECU, and air filter. And with a few half-turn fasteners in the center console, you can gain access to the engine for service to the plugs and drive belt. Further to the creature comforts, this model also features this super cool blue accent lighting that runs the entire width of the dash. It doesn't serve any other purpose than to just look rad and I dig it. There's also loads of storage with two dash mounted deep well storage compartments. And this model also features the most practical use of a rear rack I think I've ever seen with this fully enclosed high capacity storage compartment. This lid is also rubber sealed and these latches snap firmly into place to keep whatever you pack in there dry and secure. The rear storage bin can also be easily removed if you prefer to use the traditional open bed for hauling your gear. Powering this beast is an 85 horsepower 963cc V-twin. Why not call it a 1000? We feel that the perception of a 1000 is that it should be more than 100 horsepower, and we think CF Moto is probably working on a twin with a bit more output that would hit this mark. With available normal and sport modes, I rode in sport for the majority of my testing to unleash the full potential of this machine. Power delivery comes on strong at the first press of the accelerator and continues to build through mid-range, feeling almost limitless at top end. On our closed course straightaway, I got this thing going 124 kilometers an hour. That's 77 miles an hour. That's quick. And I feel like a skinnier man going downhill with the wind at his back could probably squeeze a bit more out of this machine. Nevertheless, this engine feels right at home in this chassis and didn't leave me feeling disappointed. Plus, the CV Tech clutching is as smooth as wiping your butt with satin toilet paper. 60 inches wide is really the sweet spot for a sport side-by-side. -side. Ripping through winding trails with your foot mashed to the mat, the Z Force stays so planted in the corners, you can feel your confidence surging with every turn as you find your rhythm. And the progressive quick ratio variable EPS makes handling light and nimble while reducing feedback from rock hits up through the steering wheel. An all new high performance suspension setup aids in delivering the smoothest ride over the roughest terrain. Featuring arch double A arms up front delivering 12.1 inches of travel and an all new high performance rear suspension delivering 12.5 inches of travel. For more information on this suspension, check out Luke's walk around video on our YouTube channel. Smoothing out the bumps at all four corners is a set of aluminum body CF Moto branded piggyback shocks with three position compression clickers and threaded preload adjustability. These shocks took me a minute to figure out as the clickers have a ton of throw in the thread before seating into each click position. They're calibrated way too soft to begin with and the range of adjustment between full soft and full hard is not as noticeable compared to a Fox QS3 shock. I feel like they'd benefit from a more intuitive dial knob and a bit more calibration to make them optimal. Gripping the ground at all four corners is a set of 27 inch CST stag tires wrapped around nice looking 14 inch aluminum wheels, which really add to this unit's showroom sizzle. I'm not the biggest fan of these tires and I feel like something with a more aggressive tread pattern would help deliver more traction. Although I do like to get the back end a little loose in the corners, at times I felt like I was driving on an ice rink. 
In the absence of using a name brand, more aggressive tire, I feel there have to be better stock tire options out there that would still keep costs in line for this model. That said, tires are usually the first thing side-by-side -side buyers upgrade. And with such a significant saving over other brands, your wallet will be fat with cash to upgrade to whatever tires you like. This season, we've seen a notable improvement in build quality out of the CF Moto side-by-sides we've evaluated. If CF Moto can maintain this level of quality while continuing to innovate, the company will present a significant threat to the market share of the competition. And the Z Force 950 Sport provides a value-rich option for buyers in the 60-inch wide pure sport side-by-side -side category.